In a now infamous clip from July 2015, Representative Keith Ellison, Democrat Minnesota, suggested on ABC's The Week that Donald Trump might become the president. To this, host George Stephanopoulos and New York Times reporter Maggie Haberman broke out into laughter. Then, and since that time, Trump's words and actions have appeared so ridiculous and terrible that from a certain perspective, it is darkly hilarious this person became the President of the United States. In the week leading up to the Saturday Night Live season finale last weekend, Trump-related reporting went into overdrive, as the New York Times and the Washington Post published extremely damaging stories about the current administration on a daily basis. By Thursday, the Times felt their readers could use a story titled Trying Not to Drown in a Flood of Major Breaking News. After an SNL season defined by very popular but hidden Miss Trump parodies, the show finished with an episode that barely even addressed the major headlines of the past week. In a cold open that mirrored the show's opening after Hillary Clinton's loss, Alec Baldwin played Trump while singing Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah. The real Trump had had a terrible past few days, and the show probably correctly assumed the viewers already knew that. It seems the writers decided there was little they could possibly add, other than acknowledge it, shrug and wink. Donald Trump presents something of a conundrum to political humorists who consider him a gift from God but a man who has repeatedly proven himself zanier, wackier, and funnier than whatever professional ridiculers can come up with, wrote James Andrew Miller, the author of Live from New York, The Complete. Uncensored history of Saturday Night Live as told by its stars, writers, and guests, back in fall 2015 for Vanity Fair. Miller continued on about Trump for this piece, describing him as someone who one-ups and outdoes his own comic critics, who out-lampoons the lampooners, and who raises the bar so high that comedians have trouble reaching it. SNL may have had a very successful season in terms of achieving a relatively large viewership, as they beat out their typical ratings on just about a weekly basis. But even if this country turned its tired eyes to SNL in seeking catharsis for the Trump mess, the 42nd season of the show often faltered in trying to top the inherent hilarity of the news itself. Trump was a tower, and SNL never escaped that shadow. The problem SNL faced this season was not lost on critics. The Verge published a review of the Alec Baldwin-hosted episode in February with the lead, Saturday Night Live is enjoying its highest ratings in over 20 years, despite lending absolutely no credence to the argument that comedy might improve under the Trump administration. The article went on to give praise to Melissa McCarthy's Sean Spicer impression focusing on her physical comedy gifts, but then argued, the rest of last night's mostly political episode was a series of riffs on the easiest possible joke you could make about anything Trump does, he's stupid and he's sad and he doesn't know what he's doing. A review on the ringer of McCarthy's turn at hosting the show in May pointed out that as this season went on, the writers seemed to struggle to cover Trump in a meaningful way. SNL is at its best when it uses current events as a segue into comedy, rather than comedy as a means of commenting on current events, wrote Alison Herman. That speaks to a larger truth about Saturday Night Live. Often, the show appears to do political sketches more out of obligation than passion. The New Yorker focused on the limits of Trump mockery, pointing out that the show's writers seem to have more meta jokes about how they can't just keep making fun of him forever as the season went on. If, in the past, Saturday Night Live had been goading Trump to lash out, now it seemed that the show, like the rest of us, was asking him to cut it out, wrote The New Yorker's Ian Crouch. Oftentimes, this SNL season felt like one big sigh, an under-the-breath muttering of are we doing this again? And then a satirical recap aimed at the deluge of bad Trump news. And, of course, none of this was helped by the show's decision to have Trump host the show while he was still a candidate, an experience former SNL star Tranquillum confirmed was not fun.